G'day and welcome back. Before I get into this radio, I'll just say that I filmed all this at home before we left on our vacation and it's really tight. I should be packing, but I'm doing the radio. I've brought all the files on my laptop and I've edited the video at Mother-in-Law's. We're trying to sell the house and clean up, but I have a little bit of time to put this together and I thought I could put it up as a filler between when my last video was and when I get back home and start to do some more radios. On that note, we'll have a look at the radio. Today I've got a repair only set here. In a recent video I did an AWAC 105, a very old radio for the same gentleman that owns this one. It had a burnt out volume pot and a resistor was open. So I repaired that, he came and picked it up and dropped this one off. This is the same deal as the C105. It had been restored and then sat around for a number of years and when you turn it on it didn't work and he said there was smoke coming out. So all I have to do is just repair that. So it should be a really short video and it should be a bit of fun troubleshooting. I did one of these a few years ago and uh, my experience level was pretty low and my video editing was pretty low. So I'll have a go at this one and maybe I'll do a bit better this time. There's two screws on the back to remove. One seems to be a Phillips, so somebody's changed that at some point. This is a valve set. They did make a transistor version later on. Used the same case, but went to transistors. So this model probably ran for, I don't know, 10 years maybe. I have an idea there's screws on the bottom as well. Yeah, there is two. Might be better leaving it lying down to take the lid off. All right, let's have a look. Well, immediately I can see it's still got the old filter capacitors. That may be the issue. Uh, it's got the Phillips green caps in there. They might be all right. There's an old cap in there as well. The transformer looks okay. It's pretty discolored though. There's the top of the transformer. It's got a little cover on it, so I can't really see what's going on in there. Yeah, it's five valve set, so... Ooh, that's loose. <laughs> What's going on there? So that's the rectifier, I assume. I've got the power plug here. Let's see what we've got across the primary. Nothing. I'll go to the switch. We'll try it there. Here's the power switch. The two grey wires there are the primary. So if I put my meter there. And we've got 60 ohms. So there's an issue with the power switch. Well, look at it. I'll buzz out across the contacts. Uh, yeah, that one's... I'll try this one down the bottom here. It says it's okay. The top one has some resistance in it though. I've clipped the test leads across the plug there. I'll just operate the switch. We'll see if we can change it from 7Ks. Yeah, it's not open now. I'm wasting my time, but I'll try and get some deoxid in there. Maybe it didn't go through into the, uh, you know, where the solder terminals are. I let that switch soak for a while and operated it a number of times. I don't think it'll get in. What have we got? 1.2 mega. So, so yeah, the switch is no good. I soldered across the switch contacts here. I think this is the one that was playing up. I'll try again with the meter. Should read 60, I think we had, didn't we? There it is there. So, okay, we're connected now. Here's the grey leads from the power supply coming in here. So they're the primary. Uh, there's a black wire there, a purple and a purple here. So, so these will be the secondary. And that's 278. That's 134. So the other one should be similar to 134. 144 so that's checking out okay i'll put some power on we'll see what happens i'll put some power on we're on dim bulb got about the right voltage there the lamp hasn't hasn't come on at all it's pulling some current or wattage you can see there it is one way to find out and well they had the time on their hands didn't they we did everything. So, I mean, of course, a bit older than that. <laughs> um, but they've also, um, Kluge was superb. She's only 19, um, played in their last two 50 over games. So, what sort of line have right. they got? So, that's tone. 
spin department, but uh, we're playing at the Wacker. Um, by our Best Sheds expert, that's Tommy Garland, bestsheds.com.au. Geordie Hunter's there. So it's working. So it must have just been the switch started to smoke. All right. Well, that's all there is to it. Very simple repair. I'll take the uh, switch out and see if I can fix it. To remove the switch, I need to undo the nut on the front. And there's three wires here. I'll unsolder those. The two power wires, I'll just cut them and take the switch out. All right, I've got the switch out. So I'll just gently pry these back. <laughs> that should come out there and there's the contacts well they don't look dirty that one's a little bit dirty okay all right I'll clean those up I've got a bit of scotch bright here I'll see if I can get in there well enough to clean it up and let's clean it up I've cleaned those up but they're not particularly dirty so I'm not sure how it all works I think they sit in there, don't they? There's the other one, and that's clean as well. That fits in there like that. Picks up the other ring there. The spring and the little lever operate this, so it makes it flick over as the trip goes past it. This little lever goes on here. And I think that spring sits in there. I think the spring sits in that little cut out there. There it is. Ah! <laughs> I've reassembled it with this little lever on the other side. Oh, that's going to go over anyway. Yeah, there it goes. I've got the switch in the on position and the tone control is away from off, so it's on. So if I put these together like that. Oops. There we go. Should pick it up, I think. <laughs> okay, no, it's not. I've flipped this over to the other side now, and I'll just put it together now and see if it'll work. No, it doesn't work. Doing something wrong. I've been trying to assemble this for a few minutes. I don't think I can do it. From memory, I've had to take this back casing off first, fit that on there, and then you can put the potentiometer part in and it'll pick it up. I don't think I can get this around to get in the slot in the right place. So I'll have to take this casing off here. Okay. All right, I'll try and get that in, and this is where I was having trouble. Trying to get that in there. There we go. And now it'll work. All right. Okay. Uh, I've connected the meter. I will just operate the switch. Make sure we've got zeros. Okay, that one's working. I'll change the leads over. Now uh, the leads are on the other contacts. Open. Close. Yeah. Okay. So that's done. I'll put it back together and we'll test the radio again. It's all back together. I better check it before I put it back in the radio. That one's working. I'll try the other connectors as well. Yeah, there we go. Good. All right, I'll refit it. I've mounted the switch back and I've got power on. So I'll turn it on to the switch and these lights should come on. Okay. I'm still on dim bulb. I'll see if I can find a station. Oh. All right, that's the ABC. They're doing the cricket at the moment. I had to take the tuning drum off to get to the nut down here, if you can see it. So I had to restring it. So I've lost the, um, you know, the pointer here. So what I'll do is put it on ZL, which is right there. And you can see it under the pointer there, there's ZL. I've got my digital signal generator here. It's on 600. The pointer's on ZL, which is 600. If I turn it up, you know, somewhere there. Ooh, there we go. So I'll move that over a bit and we'll get it lined up with ZL. 
There we go, that should be right. I'll change this to 1500. We'll see if that lines up. And I'll line it up with 3AK just next to Victoria there. Just going up now. There it is. So this 3AK, so that's perfect. So I'll just leave that as it is. I'll drop a bit of nail polish onto the string there to hold it on the pointer. It's still on dim bulb. We'll get a full power. We'll see if it starts to burn. I don't think it will. I think that switch had some dodgy wiring or the contacts. I've got some cleaning up to do in the room, so I'll leave this running on full power. Just make sure it doesn't catch fire. And I think it'll be OK. I'll put it back in the case. This has been running for an hour and a half, a bit over an hour and a half. And that hasn't had any issues. The current drawer is exactly the same as it was when I turned it on. And it's working perfectly. So I've put it back in the case. And these are really nice. I love these radios. Really 60s looking. Yeah, I really like them. And I love this colour. It's uh, teal, I suppose you'd call it. Mine's red. It's faded a little bit, so it doesn't look as good as this one. And the front is really white. It's very bright, so it hasn't been kept in the sun, I don't think. And it's working really nicely. Aussies are winning the cricket. To the inside, tries hard, soars against small, doesn't it? Yeah, really nice. I like these radios. That'll do for this one. I can send it back to its owner. I just thought it'd be good to do a quick one just before I left home and we're actually packing now and we're leaving tomorrow. So I'm going to put all the files on my laptop and I'll do it all down in Melbourne and hopefully I'll be able to get it up online. I hope you enjoyed this short video and I hope you can join me next time for my next radio adventure.